Hey everybody, it's Boss Brail Radio. It is September 2018. This is the podcast that we do for this month. <laughs> I'm Griff Hoffman. <laughs> On a mystery day. That was Jeff Brewer. Oh, sorry. Sorry to cut in. Yeah, hi. It's ruined now. We gotta restart. Just throw it all away. Wait a month for it. <laughs> <laughs> we missed our chance. It's a full moon. <laughs> Everybody's off There's work. Not a cloud in the sky. This was our chance. We could have done it. Could have done it. God, we had a 15 minute window. It's ruined. <laughs> Mr. 15 minute window himself, Jamie Scherer. Howdy. How's it going? Great. More like two and a half minutes. Huzzah. Nice job, I mean. man. <laughs> so, this is the, uh, the podcast where we talk about video games. Uh, three white guys talking about video games. Um, yes. Hot it's, takes. It's. it's it's the perennial classic, white people talking about video games. Mm-hmm. Oh no, where did the like ladies go? <laughs> we kicked them out. Oh, okay. It's, it's only, it's men, men's rights now. You took away the ladies' <laughs> harem picture, the Laura harem. I can oh. put it back. Okay, because that's going to have to be the, that's going to have to be the podcast image. <laughs> okay, good. If I can figure out how that's to how we, put that's it That's how in we, paste, we, paint. we draw in the demo, the, the right demo. We, we need to build that demo. Mm-hmm. And they I, they respond to this. <laughs> the Lara multiverse. It's true. How many of them are my stepsister? <laughs> oh, they sometimes for the right kind of moment. <laughs> Depends on the particular scene or moment. I mean. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're here to talk about uh, cogent topical video game thingies. Uh, and uh, Jamie, since you haven't been here for a while, you get the uh, privilege of talking about graphics cards for forever, right? <laughs> Woo! To mark his return. Heard... He's I been think... a... gone but not forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys heard of this this cool cat, Jensen Wong? Nope. He's got uh, the hear... coolest graphics cards. That you I can hear imagine. he wears some sick leather just he all does. all across his body. Does he have a leather jock strap as well? <laughs> yes, exactly. This is, the, this is the part of the show where he bends over and you just get a little peek. Yes. <laughs> just a little tease. <laughs> so the reason I want to talk about this, so NVIDIA came out with new graphics cards, uh, which usually would be cool, but not necessarily like something that I'd even want to talk to you guys about. Mm-hmm. But I think that these new ones are pretty cool. And the reason why is because they're trying to push, and this may be more marketing. It is more marketing than anything else. But they're trying to push through a new technology along with these cards. And the new technology is like the quote-unquote holy grail of video game graphics, which is actually true. It's been described that way for about 20 years, but it's ray tracing. So one thing that these new cards can do is ray tracing. Griff, have you heard of ray tracing? Do you know what ray tracing is? I don't know. Is it like uh, Metal Gear ray tracing? Yeah. Is it like rotoscoping? <laughs> exactly. It's like col- colonoscopy, but for your eyes. Can it work on my 4x3 monitor setup? Yes, <laughs> it can, actually. That's one of the cool things about RTX, actually, is that it doesn't... Uh, it's not like 4K or HDR. Like, you don't need to have a special screen to take advantage of it. It's a completely new way. It's the only new way that we've had since literally Star Fox. Like, remember Star Fox on the SNES? Mm-hmm. That, all the way until now, all 3D games have been rendered in the same way, which is this technique called rasterization, which is where the computer tries to make a 3D image and then it makes a snapshot of it and turns that into pixels and then shows you 30 or 60 or whatever of those a second. And that's what we've been getting for the last 20, 30 years of 3D games. And this is actually, a, it's like the only completely different way of doing things. And I think it's pretty cool. And the way it works is, much like normal light, it just uh, traces the ray of the, the illumination in the room. So basically if something is not lit up in some way, it doesn't get drawn so it's just black and so what's cool about this is that now game designers and developers need to take a lot of time and invest a lot of effort and energy into a scene's lighting like if you the lighting is what makes graphics look real or or unique or different and so it takes a lot of time to get that right but if you have like one or a few light sources in a scene and they're realistically depicted through rays, then things just look better and more realistic. And there's tons of uh, demos of it on on uh, on YouTube, on Nvidia's things, and everything else. 
I think it's really cool. Like technology is not here. It's literally not. Say, a... What's your favorite ray trace game right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's so they're selling this product that can do this wonderful thing. Probably not really well, but it can do it. Um, it's extremely intensive to do this. It takes a lot of like compute power, and they they're sell, they're selling these cards at like enormous prices. And there's no. The, You're the, really the selling cards, me on it, man. <laughs> <laughs> the card's normal performance is great too. It's good, yeah, it's good. But the 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 real cool thing is that I can do this thing. The only trick is that literally there are no games that do it now. A lot of games will relatively soon, like Tomb Raider, for example, Rise of the or no Shadow of the Tomb Raider, will do this thing. Hopefully, this in October they're going to release a patch. Battlefield Five is going to do it. Um, those are the two big ones that I can think of now, hopefully more in the future. But the idea is that this will actually be easier for devs, like cut down time in half. And to give you an example of that, so the Battlefield 5 people and the Tomb Raider people made demos to show at the release of the new cards. And we just found out that those developers had a total of 70 hours. Holy shit. This is, why do they have so little time? In game Nvidia jam. literally... <laughs> and they literally <laughs> gave them the tech and they're like, okay, this is a completely new way of, of making video games and here, and just have it ready in 70 hours. And to their credit, both of these companies were able to throw together really awesome looking things in 70 hours. So I think long term, this is going to have a huge, it could, it maybe it won't, but it could have a huge impact on like games, like bring times down, dev times down, make them look more realistic. Oh, the other one that's going to use it is uh, the new uh, Metro game. The new Metro game is going to be all about yeah. it. Do, Exodus. And, uh, does, is, yeah, Exodus. Does this, like, if I were to look at a side-by-side video, or if I were to just put my dumb <laughs> plebeian peasant eyes on this, would I be able to tell, like, oh, ray tracing? Or are yes. you saying, like... Have I, got, have I got some bull shots for you? In the future, <laughs> it's going to decrease dev, dev times so that we can get better returns with the time that we're taking. I think so, and you can also... I mean, you can judge for yourself. It, there's a whole, like, meme going on about... The, so this, this technology is, is called RTX, and so NVIDIA put out a bunch of these videos where RTX is on, and then they turn it off, and they go back and forth, back and forth. You can... And I, I personally, it's it's night and day for me, but I think it'll depend on... How does it turn you... on and off? Are you so switching between both? Yeah, you're switching. Okay. You're, you're switching between, you know, literally the old type... <laughs> like rasterization to ray well, tracing. So it's it's not full ray tracing, right? It's it's hybrid rendering. Exactly. So it's, so it's still it's still with... it's still rasterized but after a ray tracing. Gotcha. Pass. Okay. So it's yeah. not fully realized 100% within this architecture. No. No, no because to to ray trace like one frame, so like one single, it's used in movie making. So to ray trace one cell of animation or whatever takes like a day. On supercomputers, <laughs> like yeah. it's not it's not a joke. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, so this, so is, this gonna is gonna be like, like Toy a... Story levels of quality. It's gonna help you get closer <laughs> to that. Yeah, oh. that's the idea. I mean, the the major thing is Jamie was alluding to that it's going to I think be applied to in the consumer space is lighting mm. because lighting, as as you were saying, is like it's not it's kind of a hack job right now. Is that right, Jamie? The way yeah, that it exactly. Works? <clears throat> it's a complete like um, it's a complete weird like trick that they do and it takes a lot of time like I listened to a long um, interview with the Metro guys talking about like how long and annoying it takes just to light an indoor scene and you and have that's to because like each object has to light it like has to calculate its lighting right is hmm. that how it works I think that it's that along with the fact that it's it's literally like where can I hide this light so that the player doesn't see a light, but the sun that, <laughs> in the middle of the room. <laughs> but that the, the, they can see the room, huh. and so it like just takes a lot of time and effort. And if you, especially if you're trying to make something scary or set a certain mood, it's like it's really it's difficult. So it would be much easier if the devs could just say, "Okay, there's a sun, and that's it." And then can they I, can, yeah. Go ahead, Jamie. Sorry, no. Go ahead. No, that's that's it. Can I tell you my um, joke that I've been holding on to the whole time? Yes. I think ray tracing is coming out soon. Can't let you do that, Star Fox. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because you said, said Star Fox. That's the rasterization. <laughs> I did it, guys. Wow. <laughs> it was really good. Um, what do you... So, so tell me... Tell me uh, anything. Please, what, just how, anything how to get, to get this out of Jeff's joke. <laughs> <laughs> is there a reset button? 
<laughs> oh wait, no, it's not a reset button. It's just an open button that changes the games on your piece of shit PlayStation Classic. Oh, oh are we? That damn. was a great transition. That was. You just you just turned me for a loop. Thank you. That was awesome. What's the rasterization going on there? No, the opposite. <laughs> of, it's trash trasterization. <laughs> I have to the say case. that a small part of me was super tempted to buy that thing, and then a large part of me was just, especially because they're not giving you the, the analog stick controllers. I was like, absolutely not. No way. Are they no. not giving no. you the analog? No, you don't. You don't get the Dual Shock. You get the you get the PlayStation Three original. <laughs> you know, two. You two get grams. the boomerangs. Yeah, the boomerangs oh, are here. I would kill for a boomerang. <laughs> you know, what you do get though. Ridge Racer. Oh, Ridge Racer. <laughs> what games can you play without an analog stick? Quite Final a few. Final Fantasy VII. Uh-huh. Basically everything. Jumping Flash. Yeah. It's a gas, gas, gas. You ever played Jumping Flash? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. How is I it? I had... It's. I love that game. I had a, um, a PlayStation demo disc that had a Jumping Flash demo on it, and I played the shit out of it. Oh, Okay. That's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's terrible. It's a horrible game. I mean, it looks like garbage from everything that I've watched. <laughs> it's it's 3D platforming before uh, Nintendo was like, this is how you do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's entirely like... it. I think playing that game would probably make people physically ill, because you're looking... Every time you jump up in the air, the camera just swings down so that you oh, can just God. see everything underneath mm-hmm. you. <laughs> and it's like... It is like Star Fox level. I mean, it's, it's better than that, but it's basically it looks like Star Fox, except... With the camera like jerking around every time your character goes into the air, and your character goes very high. Hmm. So, Jamie, you were wow. tempted by the PlayStation Classic. I was tempted. I have a lot of nostalgia for that thing. That was like the first console that I f- I had. I owned an SNES before that, but that was complicated. I really wanted an NES. I didn't understand that the SNES was better than the NES. I was upset. It didn't have and Bucky O'Hare on it. Didn't have Bucky O'Hare on it. <laughs> Seriously. But this then is when amazing. I, got, I didn't know this. Oh, you didn't know this? No. no my, my dad bought me an SNES, and then he soaked it up, and he's like, this is like the one that you asked for, but better. And I started crying. <laughs> this and is like, like the equivalent of like a person going to the store and buying the Wii U tablet. And yeah. <laughs> thinking it's a Wii. <laughs> but anyway, this he loved so it. Good. But the PlayStation, we, he bought me a PlayStation 2. Uh, like one of the, like, I think in 95 or 96, he bought me a PlayStation. It came with Battle Arena Toshinden. You're like, Dad, I just wanted a Zip cool, disc, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we played Toshinden the shit. was the one where you could ring out people, right? You could throw them off the level? I believe you <clears throat> could, but it's not and like Soul Calibur style. It's not like an, like something that you would, like, go after. Like, okay. it's, it, it could happen, but it's not like a tactic. Hmm. Um,. But uh, we played the shit out of that, and as I have mentioned before, he played Tunnel B One. Oh is yes, a great game. And I'll, so I feel like PlayStation was like the first console that I ever really like, truly loved. I remember playing Twisted Metal Two with my cousin ad nauseum. I don't think is that on there. Twisted Metal Two is it? Yeah, man. With the cl- is it coming out with the classic? Oh, I don't know. No, no, no. I don't know. But oh, okay. I'm just I'm just talking about my experience with that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't released the full games list yet, right? I think they've only no, released only five. half. Oh, okay. Five five of the 20. I think Which five is just of the a 20. very strange... It's coming out, like, this year, Prepare right? to not beat Final Fantasy VII again, Jamie. <laughs> 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 what I really want to know is, do these consoles, these micro consoles, age the same way that um, the old versions do? Like, do they turn just a sickly yellow over time? I hope so. Uh, only, only the <laughs> SNES did that, right? Like, I never saw a PlayStation that that had that wear and tear. Don't they take on a weird hue, or maybe not? I, don't I got, know. I got a, I have a PlayStation One in my uh, studio here, and I got it at a thrift store, and it is, <clears throat> it is looking fine. The only yellowing on it is from the human hand crust that has invaded the crevices of the controller. <laughs> oh, the joys <laughs> of having a child. Oh no, this is from the previous owner that left it at the thrift thrift store. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you uh do you have scabies now? Uh yeah, I s- actually put it in the smoker and cooked it. <laughs> so it's fine. The crust is nice. still there. It's it smells wonderful. Griff, uh wouldn't it be great if you could get a smaller version of that which didn't play all of the games? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, I hate it with the lid sticks. If only I could get an emulator. <laughs> what I really want is I want every single RPG that Square released on the 
PSX in like something. I don't know. It could be on like my a PS Switch. PS Vita. What? Like a PS Vita? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have one of those for my car. <laughs> that you can get almost every Square RPG except for Saga Frontier. Oh, really? <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I, I did you pre-order one of these, me. Jeff? Probably not. No, I just I haven't really cared. Yeah. I mean, the thing is with with the SNES Classic, the only motivating factor for me was Nintendo. Um, the the ability, well, that plus the ability to uh, take my legal backups that I've been making over the years with my. My console device <laughs> and um, put them on there. And Star Fox, right? Star Fox Two. <clears throat> that was kind of the unique. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of an impulse buy. The jig mm. is up, as with all Nintendo things. <laughs> but no, I mean it's cool. I play. I play. Uh, I play Kirby's Dream Course with Jessica a lot. Sitting three feet in front of the TV. <laughs> well, I do have an eight bit though, but for some reason that one dies a lot. Huh. Have you had that experience, Jamie? No, my eight bit though. Uh, I have the one with the analog sticks. And it goes strong. I played like a bunch of the messenger in it, and we'll talk about that later. But it will go for many, many hours. I think I charged it twice over my playthrough of the messenger, which took fifteen hours. Yeah, I have that one. What, what is an eight bit dough? Eight bit dough is a company that makes really, that really good. <laughs> it makes really, really good, um, like uh, faux Nintendo controllers in the style of the NES and SNES with added things so i have a controller which which looks and feels pretty much identical to the uh famicom controller the super famicom controller oh okay except it has except it has double um it has triggers and bumpers and it has dual analog sticks that is very cool yeah. It's awesome. It feels really good. Oh, neat. it feels really, really, really good. And it works it, with it my does, Switch yeah. and my computer, and it works with everything. And it has the Switch buttons on it, so it's got like full Switch functionality. It's really awesome, and it's not that expensive. Sweet. Either. Okay, I'll look yeah. into that. I will say the the one thing to watch out for is the D pad is not as good as it could be. Like it's still it's not as bad as the Switch Pro controller, but it's still it's still a little shaky. Is it better than four buttons? 100. I, I prefer it to the <laughs> switch. I prefer it to the switch uh, four button things. I kind of got used to the four buttons. Like I don't know. I, maybe it's just a, an adaptation out of necessity. The only problem I have with the Joy Cons is if you have to mash a button, it just like destroys my hands. Mm. <laughs> but everything else, I'm fine with on that controller. I don't know. That's what I prefer to use at this point. Hmm. Okay, I mean, cool. Thanks. Thanks for that information. I'll check out Tate Bit Do. Yeah. Yeah. They have quite a few varieties, but you, you don't... At this point, you probably don't want the ones without the analogs because I don't even think they're supported anymore. Yeah. Mm. And they just keep they just keep going. They just keep coming out with new products, unlike another company named Telltale. Oof. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pour one out. Pour one out. <laughs> I make that joke, but I loved that company, and you guys know how I felt about Walking Dead Season 1 and The Wolf Among Us, especially The Wolf Among Us. I think that was probably their, their like, I don't know... Coup de gras. Like, I love Can't that Can't wait for game. season two. I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I ended up playing that game, Jamie, and I absolutely love The Wolf Among Us as well. Uh, mm. I, I don't know if we ever caught up to talk about that, but yeah, I adored Wolf Among Us, start to finish. Mm. I feel like it, it, for the first time in a Telltale game, had like the right amount of interactability. There were scenes in that game, like chase scenes, fight scenes, that, that genuinely felt stressful and tense. And during which you were actually, you actually had some control over the action, not a whole lot, but mm. you could screw up and die, and it didn't feel annoying. <laughs> it kind of added to the uh, whole feeling of the scene, and yeah, I just loved that game. Beautiful looking game, great adaptation of that story. I actually read that story before in comic oh, cool. form. Yeah, I've and, read all uh, of uh, all of what's it called? Um, Wolf Among Us. No. Whatever it's called, the fantasy. Oh yeah, it's it's like something. Fables. I've, I've Fables. Seen it thank house. you. Fables. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of trades of it. It's fantastic. Cool. So yeah, I'm pumped. I'm bummed that they uh, that they're gone. And what's weird? You're the pumped weird that they're to... gone, you monster. No, no, I'm bummed. <laughs> bummed. <laughs> the weird thing. Oh, they're finally they're, gonna break. So good for them. <laughs> now they're no... now their extensive catalog, once thought to be over large, is hipster. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've transcended 
<laughs> well, they're, uh, I, I think output. that that's the only real thing to do here now, and we already kind of started doing it, which is just like, uh, hey, it sucks this company just out of the blue went under, so what's your favorite Telltale game or most interesting Telltale experience? So definitely The Wolf Among Us, but I did hear for fans of, um, oh God, the the HBO show, what? Oh, Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. I heard that if you're a fan of that show and you really like the lore and you like the books and the books go on tangents, then I heard that... The, you're a bad person? The, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I heard that if you're that kind of fan, then the, what they did with it um, like adds to that universe in a really cool way. Hmm. Yeah. I really loved the first two episodes of the first season of The Walking Dead, which is the extent <laughs> of the Telltale games that I've played to completion. They were really mm. good. <laughs> Do you guys feel like they got a lot of press, but like no one else followed in their footsteps? Like, who else did that? Life kind is of strange. Thing? Uh, that's true. TT Traveler's true. Tales. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. They did a. What did they do? Lego everything. Yeah, but those are not. Those are not the same. How? They're like light platform. Have you played a Lego game? Yeah, but it's like every every major, um, uh, uh, whatever you call that, like intellectual property out there gets transformed <laughs> into a Lego game in the same way that everything gets okay. turned into a a so and so will remember game. this. Yeah, exactly. Is, is that what we're talking about? Like that <laughs> level of licensing? Well, that's how I feel. That they're similar. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. No, you're right about that. I was thinking more like that style of gameplay. Like I think it's games. infused a lot of other games where it's like there's a lot of morality, a lot of choices. Like a yeah. person will remember, like you know, your your decision will be remembered by this character and, in, and marginally influence the, the rest of your story. Kenny, man, he's always going to remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> even, Poor after, Duck. even after Telltale is gone, Kenny will remember. Pour one out for <laughs> Duck. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, they've certainly had a significant influence on the industry. It, it was just like such a surprise because I had, I, I don't think there was any reporting about them not being in good shape, and they just kept getting projects. Like, I feel like if there's like a tease of an announcement at a show, like a minor show, I'd be like, oh, what's Telltale working on this time? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they got Batman now. All right, sure, why not? I've heard the Batman's <laughs> very good too, um, but I think that's kind of part and parcel with how their current status is Jeff where it's like the only time you hear about the only time you heard about this company anymore was it's like okay so now this new property is coming out like oh there's a Stranger Things uh, oh, yeah. Telltale game um, uh, you know where that one went straight to the upside down ooh <laughs> 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 very nice <laughs> uh, I feel like they'd be a really good candidate for like Microsoft to buy because they're not are they closing or are they just skeleton crew fate uncertain uh skeleton crew <laughs> in order to fulfill investor obligations is what they said ooh so probably <laughs> wrapping up the last game or two uh this year whatever it was out like uh minecraft story 2 or something like that mm-hmm. uh, just finishing you- that up do you think there's any um, kind of wisdom or utility in, in like a big publisher swooping in and, and picking them up? I honestly don't think so. I mean, <laughs> everybody has got to learn what they want to learn from that from that company. <laughs> but but come on, man, <laughs> it's just not the same if. <laughs> Two, two people on screen just can't interact with each other like normal humans. I just hope that that <laughs> talent moves on to things and takes those uh, those methodologies and, and things into other areas in a more robust way uh, yeah. where where yeah. interaction becomes more important. Um, Mass and, and, Effect 5. And, there never becomes, and there's never a good answer. By Mass Effect 5, do you mean um, Anthem, Anthem 2? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Destiny 3, Anthem 2... Yeah, <laughs> Anthem Two DLC yeah. <laughs> crossover with Mass Effect Universe. Mass Effect is back, everyone. <laughs> um, I'll just say that uh, that Telltale did one of my absolute favorite games, uh, which was the most recent uh, Sam and Max. Uh, I think mm. it was like Into oh, yeah. the Devil's Playground or something like that, and that was yeah, gosh, that like two thousand ten. <laughs> Maybe 2009, yeah. but yeah, I think that was such a great uh, uh, series of episodes, and really, 
uh, I don't know, like it, it took the adventure game and expanded on a lot of like the the simple tropes of it and and made it so much more robust and was genuinely funny. Um, and it kind of took it in different places every episode and, and really like developed it, it. It made that episodic formula make sense before um, it, it, it laid the the groundwork for Telltale success with the with the episodic formats. Also, it's the Devil's Playhouse. Thank you, checked. thank you, thank yep. you. <coughs> and it's fantastic. Yeah, I, think, I hope that uh, yeah, I hope that somehow their work, their type of work, continues because it would be a shame if it was just kind of a blip and we don't see this yeah. kind of thing going forward. And install all the games before they're delisted and pulled from Steam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got all my, uh, all my uh, Strong Bads game for super handsome, cool people installed. Just on your Wii? <laughs> no, on my Steam. <laughs> I didn't, it launched on Wii, right? It did, yeah, you're right. Yeah, although the Wii Shop is no more. That, that heralded the, the death of Telltale. <laughs> <laughs> when the repository of Strong Bad was gone, their days were numbered. Yeah, it's a bummer, but but you know what's not a bummer is Spider Man. <laughs> I love the the punctuated clicks between. You know, it's not a bummer. Scrambles to check next page. Of <laughs> I really want to hear about Spider Man because I I have not. I just kind of let the hype pass me by on this one, and and I probably will pick it up when it's discounted. But I want to hear I want to hear the deets. I want to hear I want to hear what Griffin thinks first because (laughs) I'm going to react a certain way, and I don't want I don't want I don't know what Griffin's going to say, and so I want to I want to be ready. Okay. And the best way to be ready is to know ahead of time. Sure. Sun Tzu said those exact words. (laughs) <laughs> the best way to know about what somebody's going to say about Spider-Man is to let them talk about it first. Exactly. Um, also, do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> Sun Tzu. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man uh, for the PlayStation 4 console um, is a pretty gosh darn good game. Uh, I finished it. Yes. I am mopping up everything in order to platinum it. I'm a couple hours away from cleaning that up. Uh, but all in all, I had a great time playing it. Uh, it is a great playing game. It is probably the best Assassin's Creed game I've played in a long time. <laughs> uh, the, f- the swinging is fantastic. The traversal is pretty good. The combat is wonderful. The stealth is the absolute shit. And the story is pretty decent. I mean, I also, while I was sick, watched Spider-Man 3. So in comparison, I was like, huh, yeah, <laughs> Uh, pretty pretty decent. <laughs> did you just just binge the worst movies? I did. Yeah, well, actually, you know, I did. Was the idea that if you like alter your external reality, then your internal feelings? It was, would be yeah, it was like homopathy. Like I had to, I had to, I felt like shit, so I had to watch some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve this. <laughs> That's amazing. I I also really really like this game. I almost bought it reluctantly because everything I was hearing about it just prepared me to hate it. Like the fact that, you know, there's a lot of kind of silly side quests to do including literally chasing pigeons and like, I swinging. love the chasing pigeon side quest. I've heard so many people shit on that, but it is an opportunity for you to very quickly and astutely navigate the <clears throat> swinging architecture of the city. And I love that so much. Was, is that when Peter is inflicted with um, drug induced psychosis and feels that the <laughs> pigeons are trying to destroy New York, so he has to chase them away? No, but that is, <laughs> there is a mission that is similar to that. Okay. And it is, it is bad. I'm sure it's handled with all the sensitivity that most video games bring to the fore when it comes to mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I but just that... need a cure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Big pharma. <laughs> the the thing about this game is that there are... I haven't actually played that mission yet, but there's a lot of missions that if you would just exp- explain them to me, I'd be like, wow, that sounds really boring. But because the traversal, as you said, Griff, is so incredible... Um, and I would just be swinging around that city for hours anyway. Mm-hmm. It's that good. Um, a lot of the things are just excuses to just continue swinging around. Yep. So it doesn't, they don't need to be like in terms of the plot, they don't need to be like these fully fleshed out, um, you know, epic missions. And sometimes they are, which is kind of cool. Um, 
But a lot of times, you know, you're just they're doing the normal open world game type thing. Like they've got like a they've got like ten or so types of things that you can do over and over and over again. But they they mix them up enough. And they mix them up, variety. and there's enough variations on each one that you're you. They don't get stale like you would expect them to get stale. They really don't, which is very surprising. Like if you just look at the mini map and you're like, oh my god, all this, and then it's just I think it's just. Par- partially just the way that the city is laid out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like they're, it's it's really deft in terms of like where they decided to place, like you know, there's a hidden backpack here, and then there's a crime going on here, and then there's like a research station here. And I really think that the way that they peppered those throughout the environment is somewhat masterful because you really don't get bored, and you know, you're you're it it feels very natural going from one to the other, yeah. And it's just fun, like you're stringing you're stringing together like your own little narrative. Um, like oh, you're stringing being... together! I know. You need no to get tangled intended. up in its web. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm still pretty early. The story. I kind of. I like the story. I'm digging it, man. I don't know how it turns out, but uh, I'm, I'm digging. It. I like. The Have characters. you finished Act One? I, probably not. Okay. Probably. Probably not. Um, I just fought like an electrical guy. I chased him across the city for the you first mean time. Electro? Uh, maybe. Mm, I don't know. It was probably Shocker. Yeah, that Shocker. guy. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> you no, know, dude, that's no. what I was thinking. Oh no! <laughs> but but so that thing that I just did with Shocker. Is no, it's just like, one I heard butt, he was Jamie. in. I heard he was in Pacific Rim as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the there was this amazing chase, and it was yeah. so cool. And yeah, I'm the like, chases are great in that game. Literally unlike any game I've ever played. I when I was in the middle of that chase, I was thinking to myself, "This is." actually unique and incredible and this is so much fun i can't mm-hmm. believe that they strung this th- oh god i said it again i can't believe that they <laughs> weaved this together no, it's, it's still good <laughs> and uh I, I there's a lot to that game that's pretty astounding city looks amazing city uh, does look think, amazing yeah. having just been a recent new york tourist i'm like i've been there oh look at that <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty cool i hope it i hope it doesn't uh, overstay its welcome i don't i here it doesn't. I hear it doesn't. Yeah. Okay, it is good. well paced. Even if you want to go the route of mop every little last driblet of, of content up before you move on to the next story beat, like the game does a fantastic job of, of metering all that stuff out and and then also having things be unique enough in their own rights. And then I mean the combat is just it's it's just Batman light. Like it's <laughs> it's like, hey, do you like the Batman, Batman combat? Light. Yes, everybody likes it. So it's that, but there's a lot more gray fudge room. So it's like, oh, if you if you hit the dodge too many times, your counter doesn't, or your your combo count doesn't end. It's just like you just dodge too many times, or uh, you know, if it, there's a, there's just a lot of forgiveness in that, and a lot of customization in your suit powers that really change the way that you would engage with a combat situation too. Um, that I love it. It's it's a it's a fantastic, nice little beat 'em up that that is highly focused on that on that dodge heavy counter heavy, uh, you know, uh, character recognition and and you know combat puzzle solving. But I don't want to say like watered down, but it's it's just more forgiving. Where you know in Batman everything is very rigid and tough, and you're like, oh, I pressed the wrong button because my brain and fingers didn't connect on that one. That's that's a bummer, but this one, you know, there's there's more room for that. And and then on the other on the other side of it, it's like, oh, this mission just isn't combat. There's also a traversal involved in it, mm-hmm. and there's like <laughs> swinging around the city involved in it, and some weird bullshit where I, you know, uh, oh oh, uh, one of the best things you can do for yourself is go into the accessibility settings and turn off the mash button. Uh, Prompt uh, that has been oh my god, a godsend. You can do that? So Wait, oh my god, all what's you got to do what's is the mash button prompt. What, when does it show up? So uh, you probably heard this thing, this thing in video games where you have to hammer on a button really hard because mm-hmm. game designers are dumb sometimes. Uh, because and they, somebody forgot to grease the um, the hinge on the chest, so you just have yeah, to just keep you gotta feel the pain again. of the character by slamming on this shitty button, and uh, <laughs> you can just go into the options and turn that off, and you just hold the button, and it's like, oh, this is how all games oh should God. be. This is how every that game incredible. Um, 
Infamous Second Son did it w- with just the swipe across the touch face of the PS4 uh, controller instead of ever having situations where you had to hammer up a button, you would just kind of brush your finger across the top of it, and I love that. Uh, and this, this is the closest that you can get. However, there is zero window for mistakes, so if you aren't holding the button before the prompt comes up, you will not outpace it. So you start to realize, like, Jesus. oh, okay, i just got to be... This is the animation that means I'm going to be doing this, so... Again, bad job video games. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about the negative, and that's the stealth. Um, there are segments where uh, you as a Spider-Man can kind of stealth around areas and pick guards off and, and clean out a zone. Uh, and those are very good, in my opinion. I, I love them. Uh, the downside is typically you clean out a zone, and then it's like, wave two! And you're like, oh, okay, so we're going to be fighting no matter what. But still, like this stealthy crawling around, if you remember those original trailers that they're showing at the E3s where it's like, I throw this spider mine on the wall and that guy crosses it and it gets sucked to the wall and it's webbed. It's like, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> like the guard patterns and, and kind of methodically picking your way through a patrol. Um, love that. However, there's other missions where you're playing as not Spider-Man and there are very limited ways to interact with the guard patrols and environments and see what's going on. And it's like, oh, this is simply the worst. Simply a hot trash speed bump that I have to get through. (laughs) Now, on the other hand, just to argue with myself, um, (laughs) it is cool that you get to play as these characters and yeah, that my ears perked up when you said that. Yeah, you're playing as people that you you know aren't Spider Man. Uh, mm. I'll just say like it's Mary Jane as one of them, uh, okay. and and Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. <laughs> uh, the whole uh, the only thing you do is just look at the mirror and talk to yourself. It's <laughs> all QT. <laughs> uh, those those bits with her are interesting because sometimes they they really hit. Like there's one really cool segment where you're. Uh, kind of working with Spider-Man in tandem to clear an area. But then there's other things where it's like, don't step on the glass or walk into the boxes. Um, don't, don't do that. I'd also just like to say, too, that's really cool about the game is there's not like your typical, oh, it's the lady character in stealth, so now it's just like all the light falls on her butt. Uh, <laughs> the, the game is very, I don't know, I'd say restraint in its like sexualization of those. Um of, in those moments, so that's cool. Good, no sale. good job, good job, game. No sale. One thing that I wanted to say about the combat um, from earlier is that I completely agree with everything you said, and I'll add that it it does a couple things that just make the combat so much more dynamic than Batman combat. In that, not only a lot of it has to do with the arenas that you're fighting in. Like you might, I just had a side mission where the combat arena was the tops of two buildings that were fairly like far apart and on one uh you know building there was snipers and then on the other building there were just a bunch of grunts so i swung over to the building with the snipers and kicked them off the building first and then jumped over to the other building and it was super awesome and i just got uh the uh, web blossom griff oh yeah and uh that is like such a cool like i've heard people describe it as essentially like a win button and it, it is. kind of is yeah. but it also just makes it so much more dynamic and fun because you save it up and the second that a new wave starts and mm-hmm. it's just like a bunch of guys pile out of trucks you it's it's fun to just be like i'm gonna kill all y'all right now and yep. like what, it's is it I just like a, an aoe yeah like you just yeah. web everybody <laughs> the walls and the floor yeah you mm. just everywhere <laughs> i was gonna say ectoplasm <laughs> everywhere yeah, it's like it's like scary movie Uh, but it's really cool it's not i it's not a cheat like it's still the game is still somewhat challenging yeah and i and you can use it like a tool you can use similar things in your gadget repertoire too like that's where i I was playing it on uh, standard base level difficulty and at the outset uh, i got my ass handed to me in like the intro kingpin fight stuff like i had to replay that a couple times and and you know trucking through the game like i had some parts where i had to reset uh, but what really helped me move beyond that is like understand the, the tools that I had. So like the impact web that like knocks somebody into a wall and auto pins them, or the fact that if you just hit somebody to the ground and then just like hammer on the web button, you'll stick them to the ground. You don't need to fight them anymore. Like those mm-hmm. are the little things, and and the gadgets that keep coming up through um, through the you know campaign unlocks are really fun and 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 make combat 
uh, a ton more manageable. And after I beat it, uh, then I bumped <laughs> it down to, to easiest mode to just kind of do the cleanup for the trophies. And it's like, oh, yeah, like... There's still some po- some parts where I'm like, this game is not a, you know a sleeper. Yeah, there's great areas with with the combat and stuff like that, but it is it's not easy by any means. Yeah, no, definitely I agree. A lot of fun, and the other cool thing about it is you the combat is you know there's a lot of things to do. It's it's somewhat intricate, at least looking like. If I didn't know anything about this game and I saw someone playing it, I'd be like, wow, that looks crazy. You're doing all sorts of moves. And you would think that, you know, with the combat being somewhat intricate and with there being so many types of side missions, you'd think that this would be the type of game that would be difficult to put down and then pick back up again. Oh. But it is not at no. all. I started it, and then I played... For some reason, the messenger bug just bit me. So I played all of the messenger, and then I went back to this game. Mm. And it's like I never left. And it was the game is really good about prompting you for certain things and reminding you. And mm-hmm. it's it's just a really well like designed and polished game. It's not like that said. There are a few blemishes. Like I've noticed some weird physics with like dudes like af- like ragdoll physics. It's oh kind yeah, of really funny actually. <laughs> that is ragdoll physics are always a benefit. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> And like you'll you'll like uh, for example you'll web someone up against the surface and then a cutscene will trigger and then the web that you made will be there but the person isn't so the web is just weird looking and it's like there's little things like that uh, but overall it is really polished and really fun and I would definitely you just get it Jeff yeah. you, I think you'll really like it just buy it yeah. <laughs> I think the simple Back thing is like the. Yeah. Swinging through the city is incredible. I'm playing on the original yeah. PlayStation 4, you know, base model. My poor girl <laughs> that crashed, she crashed on boot up, like like I do with most of my PlayStation 4 games. Uh, as I boot the game initially, it crashed, you know, blue screen, crashed the second time. <laughs> Stop trying to put entire frozen pieces on the disk drive. <laughs> I'm just doing half a bagel slim. Uh,. <laughs> Pizza at any place <laughs> and time. <laughs> but it's it's running fine. Like, I don't get hitching. I don't get anything like that. I haven't crashed uh, at this point again. <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> the bare minimum, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it's so much fun. Uh, if you ever... if did you, I don't know if you played Bionic Commando. Uh, oh, I love Bionic Commando. Yeah. You're, talking about, you're talking about the one, the, the, the PS3 one? Yeah, the good one. The real good I, one. I played about ten minutes. The of hot dog one, yeah. Couldn't couldn't really get into it. It's like if you like the swinging in that, this is very similar, but brought to the realized level that it should be. It's Looks so funny like that you say that because I I did play that it. game, and I haven't thought about that game since then. I think about now. it every day. <laughs> and you're so right. There was something. There was some like weighty component to the swinging yeah. in that game. It was a fantastic is, swing. That is completely, uh, you know, reminiscent of the swinging in this game, and I think that combined with the crazy things they do with the camera angles, mm-hmm. like a like a just the right amount of shaky cam and like the zooming and the panning, it just makes it look really cool. Totally. It yeah. reminds me of when I played um, the new uh, Super Mario Odyssey, and you, in that very first level, the hat area, when you're running up a hill and then down a hill, and you realize that Mario has. Uh, like momentum for the first time mm-hmm. ever, and you're like, this is how it should have been the entire time. Mm. And that's how swinging in this game felt to me when I mm-hmm. swung for the first time. I was like, how is this so effortless and simple, yet so fun? Yeah, and I think it's like really uh, something special. I'm excited to hear that. I uh, I just want to swing around. I don't care all the other stuff you guys were talking about, especially because I'm the one person on earth who doesn't like Batman combat. I'm like, eh, but I just want to <laughs> swing around, like like a Spider Man. That's all I want. I'd probably just stick with Bionic Commando then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember if I still have the, the Bionic Commando disc. I might have sold it. It's possible. I just have to look for the white man with dreads. Friendship. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, what else do you guys want to talk about? Jeff, uh, I guess Messenger is probably the most uh, topical next. you guys want to uh, go into that? Sure, oh, yeah. yeah. I'll... I'll... I'll start off talking about it, and then maybe you can jump in, Jamie. Um, okay. So Messenger is a, uh, I'm going to call it a hybrid um, NES-style Sega Genesis-style yep. uh, platformer. Uh, very heavily influenced by Ninja Gaiden. Um, features 
features a, a mechanic where you can essentially um, travel between two different eras that are represented by the two different art styles. So kind of, um, what was the other game that did that? Was it Anodyne? No. Uh, help me out here. There was another game that did something like that. Evo? Or, I don't know, something like that. Um, but essentially, yeah, it's just a really solid and fun platformer. Um, pretty tongue-in-cheek. I, the humor, I, it landed, I guess. I don't know, it was fine. Um, I just thought it was a super solid game. Uh, it was fun to play, um, good level of challenge. I didn't think that the time travel mechanic was that exciting, except for the music, which had the best Sega bloops and blops ever. Yes. <laughs> um, and it has a weird mechanical shift, so it starts off as one genre of game and then kind of changes a little bit. Um, and it's interesting to see... I don't know, I'll just spoil bits and pieces of it. So there's some backtracking involved kind of after there's a shift in the structure of the game. And it's interesting to see that backtracking applied to like what initially appeared to be pretty linear stage design. <laughs> I don't I was I was fascinated by that. Did you have that experience, Jamie? Yeah, no, I so the all I was thinking because I I the 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 little trick was spoiled for me. So I knew it was coming. And now, as I was running through the levels the first time, I was thinking to myself, there's no way that this is, the game is going to change and it's going to be what I heard it was. Like, there's yeah. no way that these levels were, will work in that way. There's just no way. These are, <laughs> these are linear levels that go yeah. from left to right, and there's no way that they could do anything well, we, other than that. We can just say Metroidvania. There's okay, no way yeah. that this could be it. Because otherwise, how are we going to talk about it? That's like, true, that's there, true. Yeah. There's no pathways. Like, there's no alternative paths in these levels except for a couple side rooms. How yeah, could this so, be a Metroidvania? But it, but it is, and it works amazingly well. I mean, it does work opinion, amazingly well. I thought it worked <laughs> amazingly well. Um, yeah. And I, I, uh, I liked the first half of the game. Mm-hmm. And when it changed, I was a little let down. I felt like it lost its sense of pacing, which initially mm-hmm. to me made it feel less fun. But then I kept going, and I ended up really, really loving the second half of the game, even more than the first half. And I was really impressed and kind of amazed at how well they nail the whole Genesis thing. It's yes. not like a 16-bit thing. It's a Genesis thing. Well, it's with their is... weird-ass sound chip that like can't really do very much. <laughs> but it's not... <laughs> Well, it's not what? just that. I was looking into it, and um, so I was. To me, it looked like a Genesis game too. Like mm-hmm. it didn't. It did not look like a Super Nintendo game. And so I looked into it, and I was like, "How could that be? Why would it look like a Genesis game? What What's the actual difference there?" And it turns out there's actually a lot of differences. And they did go for just the Genesis look. And so to me, it it not only sounds like a Genesis game, but it like looks like a Genesis game, and that has to do with the. The color palette only two hundred fifty six mm, colors. I see, and it, and it has to be do with the, uh, with like the PPI essentially, like mm-hmm. the the resolution of the Genesis and the SNES was not the same. And so like the chunkiness of the of the pixels, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the the two hundred fifty six colors combined with the chunkiness of the pixels combined with that Genesis twang, it was like amazing. And I've never seen. We've had so much like uh, retro revival stuff. In the last few years, but we've we have not had like a Genesis revival game unless you no. want to count like unless you want to count Sonic Mania. But I would argue that this is more of a Genesis revival than Sonic Mania was. Yeah. Do you think? No, that, I would agree with that completely. Do you think that? Oh uh, God, what was that Metroidvania game that came out? Uh, I'm probably just belaboring it, but there was something close. But you're absolutely right. Like, there's nothing that's direct. Um, yeah. I just think it's really fun, I'll and the, all the up. bosses are great. There's enough yeah. twists on uh, in, in the gameplay, and fun, unique, you know, kind of one or two off things that happen that yeah. are really cool and change things up a little bit. The story, um, and at first, was a little grating mm. to me the type of humor, but it actually yeah. grew on me quite a bit. I agree completely. <laughs> yeah, um, um. but yeah, I love I love this game. I I did not expect to. You know, if you told me when I first started playing that this is a 15-hour game, I would have been like, yeah. no thanks. But I loved every minute of it. Really cool game. I, I agree completely, and it's it's funny because you play the game, and you, you're going to be playing, and you're going to be like this. I'm in two hours in, and I appear to be at the end of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you keep appearing to be exactly. at the end of the game. Um, but, you know, there, there is a lot going on there. And the ways in which I think you're encouraged to interact with the world after the shift are interesting. Um, I, I still think that the time, the central time shifting mechanic doesn't feel terribly central. 
I don't know. That was that was kind of my one thing where I was like, I don't know if this is entirely necessary, but like I wouldn't want to take it away because I do love that Genesis music. Mm. I wouldn't want to take it. <laughs> there, there are a couple things that I there are a couple were pretty things. cool. Like yeah. like a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of it is in like the background art. Like when you go back and forth. Like when you're in the uh, when you're in the village in the past, and then you jump forward to the village in the future, just seeing like the difference in the background art and what yes. happened, and like the ruins and the types of ruins. I thought that was cool. But yeah, I agree with you. I will say um, the one um, really cool use of that time shift mechanic. Do you remember the um, the place with the butterfly? Yes, I that would say cool. generally wherever <laughs> there's fireflies or butterflies, they yeah. do some cool stuff. They do some cool stuff. It, it's kind of a grab bag. I feel like that game. Like there's a lot of things going on, as you said, kind of one off things that feel like maybe in a different game they would not work together thematically. <laughs> um, yeah, but somehow somehow it all just kind of gels into like a. I think it's 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 like a textbook greater than some of its parts kind of game. Like it's each individual element. Like some of them are more fine tuned than others, but taken as a whole, when you get to the end, you're like, "This is." I'm glad I played this. Like this was a. I don't know. I don't know if it helps being on Switch. I, I don't know why it works like it does, but it it's a solid little game despite any kind of small little flaws. Those songs are just stuck in my head. <laughs> There's some Genesis great songs. Twang. Oh my god, they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. So that's that's pretty much it for the messenger. Griff, have you uh, tried it out? I haven't. I've I've watched a couple. Of, Jeff, you mentioned it. I watched a couple of videos of it, um, and it looked exactly like you described, like a Ninja Gaiden inspired. Uh, and you guys kind of already talked about the twist, right? Which is, yeah, it becomes a Metroidvania. Yeah. Okay. Is that when it also changes art style, or no? Not exactly. Okay. Um, I don't want to give you the exact pacing on that, but no, sure. it's not. It's not perfectly aligned. There, I, I can't. Oh, I remember the reason why. Okay, there is a plot reveal that um, that changes the format. Yeah, K- kind of like manufactured, but still kind of cool and interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> again, it's, it's this game. It's just this a bunch of disparate different things, like a serviceable story, um, pretty solid Ninja Gaiden esque gameplay. Some interesting Metroidvania ideas, some like time shifting stuff that all kind of work together in a strangely harmonious way. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest; yeah. it's not on my radar to play at all, uh, simply because like I, I really got into Dead Cells, and I'm like, nice. Ooh, I was, this, oh, I didn't put that down. Is this going to be another? Is that is this that? <laughs> you know, like, no, it's not that. It's not no, that. no, no, it's a pretty different feeling. Okay. Yeah. Also, it's, I it, don't like Ninja yeah. Gaiden. It doesn't... So it's not hard as balls and discouraging like Ninja Gaiden is. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's it's hard. It's pretty easy, actually. But, well, it depends on... There's some hard parts. Sorry, go ahead. I, I thought it was... I died a lot. Um, but it's the kind of game where uh, it'll be hard because the bosses are hard. And if you learn the bosses, you can, like, you know, memorize what what routines they go through and then you can you can beat them not because you got any better just because you know the boss now but I I probably died uh, sometimes it tells you how often you've died and I died like well over 500 times <laughs> okay I can't remember I, I thought I was somewhere in like the 200s or so but um, maybe I maybe I was like a thousand I honestly don't remember <laughs> um, but I, I remember feeling like for the most of the game the difficulty was not annoying there were a couple of bosses that were like actually legit, just kind of infuriating, <laughs> like strange little difficulty spikes where you're like, "This is just not." Yeah, like, that dragon. Oh my fucking god! I, that thing made tough. me so the ch- angry. The chase <laughs> thing towards the end of the game, where there's almost zero margin for error. Yeah, I don't that know if one you, thought... you, you, I died maybe twenty times on that one alone. <laughs> I feel um, like I died a bunch, and then I kind of like figured out like how to get on better terms with that but yes that yeah. that was a sticking point for sure but the checkpoint um system is pretty uh generous except there yeah except there <laughs> where there is no <laughs> checkpoint nope <laughs> um but yeah no it's it's uneven i i think just everything about that game has like a slight level of unevenness like it's kind of like a double a game but like a very good double a game oh Ooh. yeah oh yeah i mean i really got the sense that this game is like mostly a, one or a few people you know yeah. like who who didn't have like you know a huge staff to like play test it to death and uh, but it's still uh, it's still quite a little cool game I like it yeah 
It's it's it, it, maybe it's early enough in the Switch's lifespan that it doesn't get swallowed up amongst other titles. But I think I think it has a little something special. I don't know. I think it. Yeah. I think it. Again, I don't. I can't explain why, but it, it's it's worthwhile. That twang. That twang. Wow! So good. Well, I'll I'll probably watch a few more videos of it and see if it speaks to me at all. Um, but yeah, the game that I was initially thinking of was Axiom Verge. There was a little bit of a Genesis oh, yeah. vibe to that, I think, but not like from what the color palette shows in the videos that I have seen of the Messenger. I mean, I guess it was like a Genesis in that it was Bizarro NES, but <laughs> it felt very <laughs> NES to be that game. Although, I don't know. It, it was NES with some weird kind of, I don't know. Some to me, to me that game NES-ish. looks closer to the uh, to the NES <clears throat> because it even because of some weird like like um, what is it mode seven mode seven actions type yeah. stuff yeah like mode seven is SNES yeah yeah, yeah that's that's why Axiom Verge looks <laughs> that's okay like, Jeff Jamie doesn't know the difference yeah. between the two of them. Yeah, just true. don't upset him again just don't upset the him SNES again is the non Buckyo <laughs> hair machine <laughs> uh well, <laughs> speaking of upsetting throwbacks, how is uh, Mega Man 11 doing for you guys? Oh, I thought you were going to ask about Dragon Quest. <laughs> I thought you were going to ask is... about Tomb Raider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I didn't say boring hot trash. <laughs> oh, oh, is damn. that for both or just, just for his? <laughs> for both. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no. I really um, like the new Mega Man. I haven't played much of it because it's really fucking hard, but it s- feels great. I am going to be so happy when I beat that demo stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Have you played it, Griff? I haven't. No. Okay. You really owe it to yourself to try it. It's. It feels like a return to form, and the double gear system, which, like, by all accounts, shouldn't feel right, feels very right. Yes, it's really cool. <laughs> it feels essential, like from the get go. Like it feels like something you need to learn, and it's not like like the slide. Well, the slides in the game, but it's not like some of Mega Man's abilities that got tacked on that feel like they just kind of nerf the game. Okay, like it's what? Like how he had his charge buster and stuff. Oh. Like, like stuff he had his charge buster Mega Man X slide. Or was that no, charge buster charge... was in, I think, four? Uh, I never I never really cared for anything before the X's, so I don't know if I'll... Everything that, that I've seen about um, this Mega Man 11 looks really cool. Like, like you see the dual gears or whatever the hell it's called. Like, it looks like a fun mechanic, but... Everything in Mega Man is just so much a more mean and grueling platform and and, and, uh, and demanding uh, pattern recognition where I feel like there's, again, some like loosey-goosiness in Mega Man X, so that's the direction that I steer. Well, the, the beauty of the double gear is that it gives you... So, okay, so the stages feel like they require the double gear, but by the same token, the double gear can be used to, like, facilitate some of the shittiness that Mega Man has baked into it. Like, mitigate some of the shittiness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. not facilitate. <laughs> mitigate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, give me uh, more shit. Just make it worse. Pour it over me. <laughs> no, no, no. Facilitate traversing some of the shittiness. Okay. So, like, you know, like, there'll be, like, boxes falling down on platforms that, like, you have to time your jump so a box is there or something. Or, like, you know, shit like that. Or, like, if you jump at the wrong time, then you'll get pushed off the platform. Or a box will crush you and you're your iframes from getting hurt will cause you to slide backwards and die. Like yeah. that kind of shit. Um, that, that is all mitigated significantly by having the double gear. Cause you can just like slow down time and mm-hmm. not fuck around with boxes or like kill an enemy that has a ton of health because you uh, switch to your power gear. So you kill it quickly. So like yeah. it, it, it kind of makes you feel like you have some amount of agency over the crappiness of of the challenge, okay. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, for me, I had yeah. to use it. To, it. I didn't even beat the, the level, but even to get through what I got through, I needed to use those powers. Okay, yeah. So oh, that no, definitely they, sounds to yeah. me like this. This is, like you said, an option to get around some of those things that make the Mega Man games not appealing to me versus the X games. I think it's both. So I think it's it's an option to get around some of those things, but it also there are moments where like there's like enemies that you kind of need to use it on. Like there's mm. a guy who has a little circle around him, and you have to slow down time so you can shoot inside of it. Ah, oh, circle man, <clears throat> circle man. <laughs> um, but it 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 does double duty, double, double gear, double duty. No, it it does a lot. It 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 integrates super well into the game, and it feels both like a tool to make the world less threatening, um, but not not in a way that feels cheap. 
and also like a way that sometimes is just essential for traversing. Cool. All right, I'll give it a shot, especially with the yeah. being a demo. Yeah, it's definitely worth the price of free. I think, again, I still haven't beaten it, and it is a little discouraging to die and game over on on this one free stage, but um, it's cool. You'll at least appreciate that, like, hey, they're doing a good job with this, despite any indications to the contrary when we first saw it. Sure. Mm. Um, I Just to tie in with the Mega Man situation here, I ended up getting Mega Man Legacy uh, 1 and 2 through the service that will not be named. Um, mm-hmm. And played through every Mega Man game uh, on those discs. And boy, oh boy, Wait, there are some Mega stinkers. Man. Oh, oh, those are the <laughs> collections. Mega Man X the Legacy house. or Collection, yeah. whatever it's called. Yeah, 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 okay, I'm good. You played yeah. through every one of them? Uh, not from start to finish, but I you know, dipped my toe and got to a boss or two on each one of the games. Oh, I was okay. like, ha ha, yeah, this is shit. Please don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Actually, it, um... it made me really appreciate uh, Mega Man X4 uh, more than I ever have. Uh, it, that one's always kind of been like a soggy one for me, but this, I don't know, I had a good time with it. I ended up buying uh, five, five for the PlayStation uh, and playing that like legitimately and was like, oh, this is also bad. <laughs> so the rumors were false. <laughs> yes, the rumors were false. The, I think it's a cool, like, it's a cool game and a cool concept and a really interesting execution on a Mega Man game. But fuck, it is not fun to play, and it is a I feel mean like, game. I feel like they lost the plot the moment they gave you the option to play with Zero and forego all of the weapon upgrades just for a cool sword. No, I'll tell you what, they lost the plot when you could make Mega Man float. <laughs> Done. Period. <laughs> was Over. That, was that three that had that? In? Uh, it's it's five. It's five. Okay. Yeah, I remember the float. Maybe it's maybe like little four. jet boots. Maybe four right? will allow you to hover or something like that. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I never yeah. powered up Mega Man that far. But yeah, five you could just float and hover, and it's like, oh, cool. And then you get into Axel, and he has just a hundred percent nonstop float, and you use the dual <laughs> the. Hey, this is a game that's not going to be on the PlayStation Classic because you need the uh, the uh, analog stick to move his gun around. Really? There yeah. were games that required the analog stick for PlayStation? Yeah. Oh, there's, oh was I, there's also a PlayStation 2 game, but yes, Ape yeah, Escape yeah, required yeah. the uh, the DualShock analog stick. Ah, I never played Ape Escape. Just gotta get those apes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Snake versus monkey. <laughs> I never played Snake versus monkey either, but I... Uh, yeah, so that's I enough Mega Man it. talk, I think. Um, still, Mega Man X is the superior, most superior. Actually, I fell into a deep hole uh, on PlayStation... Or, sorry, uh, Nintendo Game Boy Color. I have a Mega Man X St- Extreme 2. Fuck, man, that thing is a cool-ass game. For real? Really? For real. Like, it is a really cool game. Interesting. I the only one I know about is Mega Man Five for um, Game Boy, which somebody stole hmm. when I was at music camp. <laughs> I will never forgive them. It was a fun game. Huh. <laughs> you fought like the a... Saturn and Neptune. You fought planets for some reason. Interesting. Yeah, it was some, a good game. Someone at my summer camp broke my Neo Geo Pocket Color. Oh my <laughs> they god! Did, they unwittingly did like a thousand dollars of damage to you. Yep. <laughs> Oh no, that's not that much money. Are they? They're not expensive. I thought they no. were. No, Neo Geo Pocket Colors are not. A Neo oh. Geo Machine is. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not super up on the Neo Geo intricacies. It was an emotional bro- blow worth fifteen thousand dollars, though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, we should move on. You guys want to talk about your um, Tomb Raider? Did you guys both play that? No. Just Jamie? No, I didn't play it. Yeah. Jamie? I can talk about it real quick. Okay. So my the only interesting I'm not that far in. I'll say the game looks incredible. Now to, to start uh, off, you played Tomb Raider reboot, Shadow of the Rise of the Expenditure of the uh, Block Party of the all I've the... played I have pl- at least played every single Tomb Raider game. Ugh. And I've probably beaten all of them. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like every Tomb Raider game. Every yeah, like everyone liter- in like the literally, line. Like I beat, I beat uh, the only ones that I might not have gotten through in, in their entirety, there were a couple on the PS2. Oh, yeah. Those, those are the good ones, right? Where she had like a glaive or her like emo boyfriend had a glaive. Yeah, there was some weirdness going on. I think like those were supposed to be really, one of them was supposed to be really good, wasn't it? One of them I beat. 
One of them I had fun with. It was like it was like the very first. It was one of the first like uh, um, quick time event type things, oh, and it was like new and novel. And you were like, "Yeah, I'm in a movie. This is cool." <laughs> Lara um, has left her mark on the industry in just the best ways. <laughs> but but basically every single Tomb Raider game that has come out on the PlayStation One, so one, two, and three, and then every one that's come out on the 360 or later, I've played and beaten. Definitely. Every single one. Including these the three new ones. So 2013, which is an actually excellent game and still holds up. Mm. And if you and if you haven't played any of these games and you want to play one of them, just play that one. Mm. Because uh, Sh- Rise and Shadow are just iterations on 2013. Which one's that? 20- What's that called? Yeah, it's just called Tomb Raider. Is which it? is why I refer to it as 2013. Yeah. Oh. It's just called Tomb Raider. They, and, should, uh, uh, they should give it a subtitle a la Star Wars A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> but that game, Beginning that of the game Tomb Raider. reinvented the mechanics. It's, uh, Tomb Raider Blue Tank Top Harvest. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's gray now. And it's torn up. <laughs> okay. She's really hurt. She's, she's, she's hurt. Her ribs hurt. Um, so that game... <laughs> you mean re- like when she gets impaled repeatedly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then oh, just gets up. Gets so hard about that. <laughs> Not only did that game reinvent the mechanics, but it had like a good narrative arc, and there were weird things that the narrative the the narrative kind of reinforced with regards to the gameplay, and the gameplay kind of reinforced with regards to the narrative. That I think um, made you Griffin think of that uh, Frontline game. Is it what was it called? Oh, uh, Front I know what you're talking about. No, 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 the one where you're the bad guy all along. Frontline? You gave it to me on. On PS3. Oh, oh, God. Uh, Spec Ops, The Line. Yes. That one? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, so. Wait. Yeah, that game's You're great. Troy Baker all along? <laughs> <laughs> this game, if anything, does more of that. This game kind of shows you that you're kind of a jerk, which is cool. This game is doing some interesting things. I think this game is going to be Are you going along than... with the journey, uh, with that, with that journey with Laura, or are you, are you, uh, is it, is it uh, contradictory to how your feelings? Like, is Laura going through the journey and you're not, and you're just like, shut up, lady. Like, you're not the cause of the apocalypse, or are you feeling like, oh my gosh, yes, we did this together? Um, a little bit of both because you do. I mean, you you there are, there are things that this game does to effectively place you in Laura's shoes. Like, you go to the Croft Manor, but you go there as like an eight year old girl. And it's actually a really cool kind of affecting little thing that they throw in. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little side mission. But there's a... You're kind of like a, It's almost like a buddy cop movie, these games. And your buddy, his name is Jonah. And he's, like, not insane like Laura is. And so everything that she does that's, like, a little bit uh, manic and crazy, he's like, what's wrong with you? So you get, <laughs> you get, you get both of those... Um, you get both of those perspectives. The thing that's that's getting a little thin is that at this point, for someone like me who's played all of these games, is much like <clears throat> Dragon Quest Eleven. Like these games have things in them that have happened over and over and over again, and it's almost like it's its own genre. And it would be annoying, except for the fact that I love these games, and it's almost like a comfort blanket. It's like, oh it's yeah, like, uh, James oh, Bond. He's always got to order that martini. Exactly. No, it's like, of course this is happening. Why did I think this wasn't going to happen? And I love this. And like, you're like, yeah, this happens every game and this is fine and I enjoy this. But at this point, I really feel like they're just struggling. Like they can't do the Uncharted thing where they're they're really genuinely like reinventing themselves each game. And so it's starting to get a little stale at the same time. They do it well. So if you like that Mm. kind of game, like if you like Dragon Quest and you know what you're in for, it's kind of like a nice... Like, this is, at this point, it's becoming as, like, as entrenched and predictable a genre as JRPGs. Like, there's so much about this game that I know before I even pick up the controller. And I don't know what to make of that. I'm going to make a uh, Jeff uh, hot take uh, way too late in the game joke right now. Um, and that's my thoughts about Dragon Quest and Tomb Raider, and that is they belong in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> no, true. they belong in a tomb, which Lara will then raid. How, what's her <laughs> attitude towards tombs these days? Does she still hate them? Does no, she, she does she opine about tombs at any point in the in the game? No, she loves them too much. That's how the about problem. wombs? Does she? How about raiding wombs? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> still into that? <laughs> she loves the tombs too much now. Even the locals are like, hey, can you stop it with the tomb raiding? And she's like, no, my father. So the cultural appropriation is one of the things she's that like, I've heard is hot My white father. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Is His life matters. They, they still don't know how to do this. <laughs> It's not a bad game. It's it's probably a good I've game. I've heard the opposite, is that it is the <laughs> worst in the franchise, and it is would misses say, the mark entirely. Would, would you say that an apt review would be Shadow of the Tomb Raider? <laughs> <laughs> I think an, a, a good review title would be Shadow of the Tomb Raider colon a mixed bag. <laughs> a mixed fun bag? Yeah. <laughs> Fans of the genre. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> but but uh, that's pretty much it. I want to hear what you have to say about DQ Goff. Yeah, um, they got some good blizzards. I really <laughs> like the Jurassic Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real blizzard. Damn it. <laughs> um, no, Dragon Quest is really good. I, I I really recommend it. So okay, let me say my piece on Dragon Quest. Um, so Jamie's right. It is it is one hundred percent a predictable JRPG. Um, and what I will say is that the first oh god there's like there's like a stretch of time in that game where you're not I wasn't sure that I was having a whole whole heck of a lot of fun because it gives you it gives you <laughs> tools and it, hold on calm down Griffin Sorry. it gives you tools and it gives you <laughs> like it lets you play with them but only a little bit to start like it's a very slow like the the skill panel so like the the player progression and like the the kind of level of control that you have over how to develop your characters and how to interface with the world it's meted out very slowly so like you know because this is a dragon quest game like the introduction is long so like you have like a good i don't know three or some odd hours where you're just alone and it's not that fun to play the game alone like it's not fun to have one party member like, it's kind of fun in that you have to think carefully about how to survive battles, but it's not that fun. Um, and then the game gives you two party members, and that's kind of fun, but you haven't really gotten enough, like, skill points to have cool moves for your characters. So maybe you can learn, like, one ability, but, like, you still aren't doing much more than just attacking and using items. And I think that's probably the weakest part of this game. Like, the, the introductory, I don't know, chapter, I would say, is just kind of slow. Um, but once you hit this point in the game where the game basically just throws two more characters at you immediately, um, it starts to get really good. And I'm having I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I'm playing it. So when it came to the West, uh, they added voices, which are nice. I appreciate the voices. Uh, but they also added like a challenge mode. And I'm playing the the challenge mode with harder monsters. There's a bunch of different challenges you can turn on. And it is like insanely hard. Like it is hmm. it is hard in a way that like. I think, you know, I think, I'm sure there are people who are good at Dragon Quest and can just, like, steamroll it. But it's hard in a way that other RPGs aren't, which is, like, it, it, like you'll fight an enemy and they'll have, like, two attacks. And one of them is an attack that hits everyone in your party. And you have one heal spell. And your heal spell is single target. And, like, the whole point of that battle is for you to figure out a way to make it, to, like, get to the end of the battle without running out of resources. Like, that is, like, the spirit of a Dragon Quest battle, I feel like. That sounds like the worst. (laughs) (laughs) I love both of your responses. It's so, I'm sure it's a lot easier if you, if you turn off the challenge mode, but it, I I imagine that same feeling is intact, because I think all it does is just, like, lowers the damage a little bit and and reduces health pools. How how do you, so, so, legitimate question, like, how do you um, deal with that, with having that, like, RPG, classic, old-school player mentality of, like, I have to hoard every item, and everything is sacred? It's not like that. No, it's... You've just got over that hump? You just got over that hump. Like, so, the game tells you... This is the cool thing about this game. So, so yes, it's mad old school in all kinds of ways. But, like, it has these nice touches. Like, if you're going to sell an item that you can't get back, it's like, hey, do you want to sell that? Because you might not be able to get it again. Oh, I, like it tells you. I, I meant more, like, in combat. Like, I'm not going to use my Mega Elixir because I'll need that for oh, the end no, no, battle. No. you got to use your Mega Elixir. Oh, this good. is not that kind of game. Good, 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 good. <laughs> like, that's the thing. So, like, I, I feel like every JRPG, like, has its own set of kind of, like... I don't know, for lack of a better word, like, mores or, like, ideas behind how you engage with the system. So, like, yeah, Final Fantasy, like, you get the elixir, you don't ever use it, you get to the end of the game, you're like, I have 47 elixirs, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> this game, like, first of all, its its lineage is that each character could, or 
sorry, the one character you had in your party could hold like 10 items. So that still persists in kind of a limited form. Like you can only carry so many battle items in, but you have like an infinitely large bag that everything else can go into. But like that mentality persists. So you're, if you get a healing item, like you're using that item, like you, you're, you're popping all your medicinal herbs. Like I just fought a boss where, you know, like your ether in Final Fantasy where like you get them and they cost like, you know, I don't know, 10,000 bucks and you're mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to ever use this. Mm-hmm. Like I just popped all my magic heals because you needed them. And like, again, you know, I had buffed up my party in all kinds of different ways. And there's this cool feature where you can, it has a cost to it. You can basically reclass your characters and like reuse their skill points for a small fee. Um, but it feels like, it feels like a kind of like a heavier investment than just like switching jobs because you have to pay for it. But, um, so I'd reclassed all my characters. I went into this fight. This dude has, is like a, like a squid, right? It has two tentacles. Oh. The tentacles both do multi-target attacks sometimes. Sounds like and a party a squid. <laughs> And then the squid attacks the whole party twice. How many tentacles? <laughs> so many tentacles. Nice. Um, and it was just, again, it was just like this, like, they bloody sloppy endurance tentacles? match. Sloppy slap. tentacles. The te- <laughs> sometimes the tentacles protect and sometimes they attack. And I, I, I'm <laughs> very into both of those. Uh, but no, it was just like this, again, it was like this bloody endurance match where like, and there's a lot going on. Like there's party switching mid-battle, like stuff you wouldn't expect from an old school JRPG. Like you you can get pretty micro in terms of the stuff you're doing and the kinds of tactics you're deploying. And I was like, it was knockdown down drag out. Like by the time I got to the end, all my characters were out of MP. They were low health. Like, I did one last desperate hit, and then he died, and I was like, this is super cool. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, have, I was... I have was you really ever considered it. that you're not playing it right? <laughs> it's possible I'm not and playing it That right. you need to learn to play that game? Yeah. The way have that you can serve items in? and stockpile things and... That is yeah. true. Uh, I am not skilled at Dragon Quest. I'd have, have to... Have you ever considered have to... jungling in your lane? For <laughs> <once>? <laughs> I've thought about it, yeah. Um... What was I saying? No, it's 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 a it's just very satisfying to play. Um, it has, I think, it has the right amount of depth. I think it's got some really cool stuff going on. Statuses actually matter. Like it's it's yeah. it's cool in a way that I don't know. It, it feels like a throwback, but it also feels unique. It feels it, it occupies a cool space. Right. Um, and the story the story starts off again, kind of dry and slow. But it's it's hit some interesting beats and even had like some emotional moments that actually kind of landed pretty well. Um, How far in def- are you? Oh god, <laughs> like forty hours in, <laughs> and I don't even know. I don't know when it ends. <laughs> this is this is one of those situations, Jeff, and I I, I poke at you because um, I cannot play Dragon Quest games, and it's like you're like this is challenging and difficult, and I'm like that's I can't. Like that's I'm not tall enough to ride that ride. <laughs> <laughs> but you can you can I mean I don't know how bad it is without the draconian mode on because Tim Rogers says it's easy but he knows how to play. Well, well then, <laughs> I guess I'm sold. No, it's just if you're telling me that it's it's difficult, then I'm like, yeah, okay, no thanks, goodbye. Yeah. Also, also I don't want to play Checkers Eleven. <laughs> it doesn't feel like checkers. It's so charming. No, it's it's, like, it's just the same game forever. I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that. Like I, I it, How's it the Toriyama art? It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh the enemies are pretty darn cute. There's some there's some real standouts for sure. What's your favorite? Uh, definitely Ooh, my favorite. Uh, there's one that is like a genie beating a taiko drum, which I like quite a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was hoping you'd just say a genie beating it. (laughs) I haven't gotten that far yet. In Um, Tim Rogers' video, didn't he explain that, like, literally, like, the math for the combat of this game has not changed since DQ1 on the NES? Like, and that's he he did say that, yeah. And that's like a good. I think that's kind of like a cool thing. Like, like you know, it's changed on the periphery, but like the core, you know when you miss like you have this percentage chance to miss blah 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 like that stuff hasn't changed since 25 years ago which is kind of cool hey thanks yeah, for backing it, up my checkers argument jimmy <laughs> <laughs> it's just different like it's like again i don't know how else to describe it other than just saying like it just has a very different set of kind of rules and regulations than like final fantasy which is i think the kind of bog standard western accepted jrpg like 
if something says it does about 30 damage, it does about 30 damage in the beginning of the game and in the end of the game versus like spells that scale and like increase with your magic stat. Like those don't matter as much, but they also kind of matter. I don't know. It's weird. Here's Mm. the most important question about any JRPG. When you're in a store and you're going to buy a sword and you have a sword equipped, does it clearly show you this sword is better than your sword? It does. It it, it 100% does that. Also, it has a crafting element, which you can do at campsites in the game, which is really fun. It's it's not stupid like Dragon Quest VIII crafting, which was like, it saved the game every time you did it, and it was all probability-based. This is like an actual interactive mini game where you can actually like hit the item and it's it's still it's still turn based. It's not like real time, but you can hit the item in different ways and you get these skills that let you hit it different ways and you can get like plus I'll one, hit it plus ways. two, and plus three <laughs> variations of items. To so let's go back want, to those Jamie. tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe a dumb question, but did you already say what this game is on? Uh, PS4, Steam. And that's all. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's on Xbox One. I, I was just remember. wondering if there's like a touch element to it with you hitting your items and whatnot. <laughs> no, no joke aside, like joking okay. aside, like is it? It sounds like no. Of- it's not that kind of interface. Like it, when I heard about it, I couldn't visualize it. But essentially, what happens is you get like a picture of the item, like a facsimile of the item, and there's these different bars that you have to hammer on. And hammering uses like focus, which is a limited resource. And you have to basically try to get all the bars within certain ranges. Um, and it's pseudo-random, but there's skills that you gain down the line. But again, it's, it's a little slow to get going, but once you get So it's rolling, like a rhythm game? No, there's no. it's not real-time. It's turn-based. Or it's like no. swing, wait. Oh, for beating your beating your metal? For beating your metal. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> um, it's it, it just works. It's so, it, so much about that game is comforting and fun. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> It, it, you know, it sounds like it has a charm that I identified a little bit when I played 8 on the PS2. And it sounds like it's, it, like, if you're into it, it sounds like it's a great one of those. And the, I don't great... mean that, I don't mean that in a in a derogatory way. Like, it's, yeah. it, it, the gra- it's very charming. I think the graphics look absolutely gorgeous. Oh, um, yes, they do, yeah. Yeah. And if you're telling me that the story has some genuinely touching moments and interesting twists and... It sounds like it could be a cool thing to check out. It's a cool thing. And I would say that I also played 8 and couldn't really get into it. I just felt like 8 had a lot of um, just slowness to it. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, everything just took a little longer than it should. And while that persists a little bit in some areas in um, 11, they have, like, gaijin-friendly things like hold the R2 button to run really fast. Hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> Um, and once you get the like the fast travel in the game, you can just use it to go anywhere in the world. I think the problem with Dragon Quest and why it's so hard to reel in Western audiences is that it really is kind of like a stone starting to roll down a mountain. Like mm. it starts out tiny and not a lot going on and not going very fast. But then once it like reaches terminal velocity, it just starts going out of control hmm. and gets gigantic. Hmm. And that is that is what these games are. Like they start off very humble. I don't know why. I think there's just some sense of obligation to the past or something. But once they get rolling, there is so much cool stuff going on. And it's just really fun. I've, I've Other than Dragon Quest Nine, which I played all the way through, like this is the first um, Dragon Quest game that I'm in it, in it to win it. So, cool. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's good. That was a very Tim Rogers wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I know that. I, I know a lot of people spoke highly about Dragon Quest Nine. That was one of the few ones that I actually played. So if if this is catching you like that, then it's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just I, I think the biggest weakness is just it's a little slow going in the beginning. But once you get once you get the ball rolling, it gets really fun. Hmm. I got a ship now. I can go places. I do all kinds of cool shit. Is cool. it an airship? Not an airship yet. It it's a ground ship. ship. It's a it's a water ship. Oh. Is it a is it a plane? But the propellers are broken, so you're in the water. But it's kind of a plane still. But you're only in the water. <laughs> you can only go in the shallow water. Is it named yes, the Tiny that. Bronco or something like that? Maybe the Tiny <laughs> Ford Bronco. Um, <laughs> No, I was going to say also Silvando is pretty cool. I like Silvando. Although he's kind of, he used to be, I used to be like, yes, I'm, I'm all about this character. He's, so he's like very flamboyant and probably gay, but kind of owns it in a way that feels 
feels nice, but the longer I play, the more maybe he's just a self-parody, <laughs> which makes me a little sad. I'm not sure yet. He hasn't gotten, like, his character arc, but I like him. He feels refreshing. It just sucks that the composer of the game is a noted homophobe because he, you're kind of like, is this is this respectful or not? I don't know. Hmm. Just but. wait until Valkyria Chronicles comes out uh, next week, and uh, I'll probably have something to say about that because those games have always been horrible with that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Especially, uh, especially three was it or two? Well, three this one I hear right? is a return to form. <laughs> so <laughs> only the original amount of homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Dad used to make. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I I don't know how to sell you guys on this game, but it's it's good. If if you have a hankering for a JRPG and you have just a little bit of patience to let it kind of get its hooks into you and unfold, you will be rewarded. Mm. I have neither of those. So, (laughs) (laughs) all right, fair enough. I appreciate that you love Dragon Quest and somebody's got to do it. I'm glad that I'm, that I'm coming to Dragon Quest. Like I'm glad that I, I wish I was playing it on switch and they just announced a TGS, uh, the title for the switch version. So it still exists, but it's, uh, it's real good. Yeah. I know, I know we're in the back end here. Um, is there any TGS news or Nintendo direct news that we want to cover? I know it's a little bit late in the game here. Uh, yeah. what even was in that direct demon, Damon X Machina? <laughs> What's that? Damon X Machina news. <laughs> I don't remember what was in the direct. That was good. Um, Luigi's mansion. I don't know. Yeah. Luigi's super dead. Yeah. Did, you, did I send you guys that Kotaku article? Probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you did. I saw it. It was great. Yeah, I don't think so. I think, you know, the stuff has been announced, but nothing that really lights my world on fire. What about you guys? The new Death Stranding trailer still gets me excited, even though it's essentially nothing. Was that a trailer? Like, I feel like at this point, <laughs> I've seen so many trailers that are not in engine that I'm like, well, that oh, this is the trailer, huh? weird i felt like it picked up right where the last one left off and being like really strangely like asinine in tutorializing like Mm. if you want to live you're gonna have to outrun this dog i felt like this was (laughs) this was the least interesting trailer yet because it was like there was no i mean as much as as it's easy to rag on kojima for like having these like over long cutscenes and and camera angles and visuals and all that stuff like at least that's interesting. This was this was a video game as video game quote unquote yeah, cutscene where it's like, I'm a man who's going to fight you. Camera zooms in, camera zooms out. Ha ha! Things are different now. And then I think, totally dug it. Oh, it was the think, worst. Do you think after that scene, a tutorial pops up that says evading the dog? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like how to hold on to the dead bodies. <laughs> um. I think I, I does actually it I no it cool. no tutorial pops up because this is still not a game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I dug it, but I, I didn't like it as much as the other trailers. But I think it's probably the truest representation of what this game is going to be. <laughs> it has that Metal Gear Five jank. I was like, okay, Troy Baker is here, so right, yeah. Metal Gear. But also, <laughs> it just feels like Metal Gear. It's like this dialogue is weird. People aren't saying enough words. Uh huh. There's more emoting than there is speaking in strange ways. <laughs> oh, man. There's like anime bravado mixed with silence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so down. I love the gold mask. I love how his gold mask became the gold mask on a giant dog. It was cool. I'm so down. I'll, cool I'll tell you what. The thing is, it's like anytime I I want, now that I'm doing more D&D stuff and I'm like, trying to create my own narratives and trying to make my own stories and things like that. Anytime I see somebody who who does something amazing, like, like God of War, and I'm like, fuck, this world is so rich and a fascinating and deep and incredible. And then, you know, Spider-Man, the same kind of extent where it's like, yeah, it may not have the same level, but there's at least, like, interesting things and encounters to be involved in. And I'm sure I played a bunch of games in between those two, but Monster Hunter, um, when I see this, I'm like, oh yeah, I did this. Like I, you're the fancy magic man that takes off his mask and puts it in the magic, and then you make a magic mask monster out of your mask. You're like fuck, man, that's like <laughs> that's like fucking 101 on how to craft a story in an encounter. This is bullshit. I was into it. I thought it would look cool. No, it was trash. All right. 
right. The only thing that I liked about it is it was like licking his paws like a kitty. <laughs> it, that's, I mean, I really think that is the truest representation of what this game is going to feel like from start to finish. But you know what? I've had like I've had a void in my heart where Metal Gear Solid was before, so like I, I want to go back to MGS Five. So I'm ready for that jank. I feel like I'm primed for the jank. Yeah, I, I just don't even know it's a game. That's a thing, man. Like I don't know what this is. I know that it's Segoy because some <laughs> person said so after the trailer. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Do you think um, in Japan on a variety show they've ever watched a trailer that wasn't Sugoi? Never, no, never. <laughs> do, you, do you think that that that? Do you think that Death Stranding is? <clears throat> let me try and put this eloquently. Uh, do you think that Death Stranding is more marketing than it is game, or do you think it is more game than it is marketing? And what I'm trying to say with that is. Do you think that the deal is okay? Okay, Kojima, you want to make this game, therefore you need to drum up these resources. Therefore, you need to sell these cell phone cases and these fucking necklaces, these fucking patches, <laughs> in order to keep your project running. Or is it the the inverse where it's like, like he has everybody hoodwinked, where it's like, no, this is my vision and this is amazing. Therefore, you should be selling these things. And, and people should be glomming on to this product, which is this Kojima vision. I think I Sony can't. is just used to like Sony is like okay when we when we got la- um when we got Uncharted four we gave them three hundred million dollars and then when we got Spider Man we gave them like three hundred fifty million dollars okay so let's give him four hundred million dollars <laughs> and I think that he got four hundred million dollars and he was like fuck they gave I'm him that money chains. before those two games though dude <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Before those two games were made! <laughs> I Here's what I'm going to say. I can't wait to play Death Stranding in theaters everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can't um, wait to play Death Stranding when it debuts on the PS5. <laughs> it will definitely be cross-gen. I have oh, not yeah. a doubt in my mind. I agree 100% on that. <laughs> There's we're no way late. this game is coming out next year. No. <laughs> <laughs> if if it was if it would if it would be there would be a date and there is not a date. Yeah. I yeah. think it'll be a bad game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, no that, shit. That, it'll be a bad game. <laughs> I think it'll be a bad game that I'll love. Yeah, and I'll like, no, it'll Yeah. Go on. I completely agree, Jamie. It's going to be horribly paced. It's going to be full of just like complete jank, like I said. But it's going to have a certain something behind all the terribleness. Yeah. I actually disagree with that. I I think that if it does ever come out, it will be a really cool game. Because you have, uh, gosh, what's the company? Um, the Horizon Zero Dawn. Sticks. Like, what's that? <laughs> because they have ropes instead of sticks? No, no. You <laughs> the have, Decima engine. Gorilla? You have a, yeah, you have Gorilla Games behind it, which has made, you know, historically some pretty badass game so much like you know metal gear solid 5 even though the story was convoluted and nonsensical and and schizophrenic and kind of bullshit like most metal gear games but this one even more so it was a pretty bomb ass game in there so i think that if death if death stranding ever does come out it will be a cool game but it will be trash (laughs) <laughs> so you think it'll be mechanically solid but but otherwise terrible I think if it does come out it will be a me- mechanically cool game but just goofy just goofy as fuck how many five minute car rides do you think there will be <laughs> 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 they've already I paid 100%. for the licenses for all the music <laughs> I 100% think this game comes out I don't think I think it it yes definitely will not come out anytime soon but I just feel like there's no way in hell that Sony Gorilla all the different parties involved would would let this game not come out. I mean I'm sure he could have a meltdown and then Yeah, I mean something... what what other games would would Sony not let come out like Shenmue 3 and Final <laughs> Fantasy 7 t- remake? <laughs> How many other games have they put I mean, their money they, into that this aren't going to happen? Well, they didn't put their money into those, though. I don't think. They did, They're Certainly though. not. Did they fund Shenmue? Oh, yeah. How much did they put in for Shenmue? Uh, I know there was money. 
Okay. It could have. Right. They could have just been a one dollar backer. It was like we're going to give you the money for the plane ticket to get to the E three stage. <laughs> they bought the jacket. They bought the Ryu Hazuki jacket. That's about it. <laughs> I don't think the level of support for those games is anywhere near what it was. I mean, this is wholly funded by Sony for Death Stranding. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This I don't know. Tough. I just. Yeah. I just feel like Mark Cerny would bust into. Kojima's apartment with like a gun in one hand and some sort of exotic knife in the other. And I Do think you think that Death Stranding is Knack 3? <laughs> <laughs> all those little guys are just little mini Knacks and all the dead people come together and do one big Knack. <laughs> uh, no, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Knack 3 is going to come out before Death Stranding and Death Stranding will be Knack 4 the cart game. Knack <laughs> 3 doesn't need Death Stranding holding it back <laughs> I think Death Stranding is going to be like The Sims but you can only be Mads Mikkelsen <laughs> we haven't heard from him in a bit they just keep true. introducing new famous actors without any explanation for what <laughs> how they're going to be utilized yeah well I think that, that now you've had the like you've had the peak right where it's like Troy Baker is in there and in the videos and they're like yeah no fanfare no, no, like facial recognition or anything. Just well, like, you know that Troy Baker is like the least. He's like the, the least marketable name on that project now. Well, yeah, absolutely. But that's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's like they've they've hit their exoticism of of like we don't have Bionic Woman Lady, we don't have Mad Mickelson's <laughs> or Mister Walking Dead. Like we don't have anybody of these. So here's just here's the old workhorse Troy Baker. <laughs> I can't wait for him to be replaced by Kiefer Sutherland in Death Stranding Two. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't no, wait I for know. Nathan Fillion to just play Cade Six in this game. <laughs> <laughs> it just reprises his role. And yeah. Why don't we get uh, Why don't we get the Wizard Game from the Moon guy back too? What's his yeah. name? Again? Oh yeah, that'd be good. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Game of Thrones, yeah. Mr. Game of Thrones himself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, it's. I think we're we're all in agreement. There's the project has some issues, but yeah, I don't know. we shall see. We All shall right. see indeed in 2020. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? It sounds like we're we're good. No Nintendo Directs. TGS has been kind of neat. There's been a lot of cool Devil May Cry okay. stuff. I don't know if you guys are into that, but I've enjoyed watching those trailers. Looks like a good game. I'm excited yeah. for that. Yeah, it looks real cool. Um, I'll just say, uh, I don't want to talk about it because it's old, but Hyper Light Drifter, did you guys beat that? No, but no. I got pretty far. I enjoyed my time with it. Okay. I, I came back to it and it's real good, but it's I, I'm not going to say anything unique about it other than that it's pretty and it's combat focused and I liked it a lot. You guys should play it. I it's, played uh, a little bit of Switch. it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Switch is a great platform for all those kinds of games. It seems that because way. it has because it has Nintendo on the back of it and it's portable. <laughs> that is the more the more salient reason. Mm-hmm. No, it's real good. Um, but yeah, I got nothing else. Yeah, sounds like a good place to end it. Gentlemen, uh, fellow white people, it's... <laughs> that sounds bad. Uh, <laughs> it's been a... Lara uh, Croft is a hero. Right, yeah. <laughs> she can't be blamed for one tomb that she raided when she was young. <laughs> Much I'm like so Mark sorry. Wahlberg. <laughs> Des Moines' own. Uh, <laughs> We gotta go. This is the end of the podcast. We'll see you next month. This has been Boss Bro Radio, and I have been Griffin Hoffman and Jeff Brewer. Say your own name. Uh, Jeff Brewer. And James Scherer. Thank you for joining us. Jeff Brewer. Let's make it happen again. No. Yes. Yes, definitely. All uh, right. Uh, once the, the equinox. <laughs> <laughs> the northern lights. When the lycanthropes return. <laughs> And the armies of darkness have risen once more. (laughs) All right. Peace out, guys. Peace out. Finish the game. Finish the game. Finish the game.